Hi there guys and welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much for watching. I want to say thank you to all my subscribers. You guys are amazing. Thank you very much for your support. I really, really appreciate you joining the family and your support means really, really a lot to me. So thank you. Now, in this video, I want to talk about the things that really shocked me when I arrived here in the Netherlands. For those who don't know, I moved to the Netherlands uh, almost five years ago. And uh, I am Kenyan, so I moved from Kenya and I moved to the Netherlands uh, called Turkey. So I had never been here before for a visit. I just moved here in one time and started to live here. So there are things that came to me as a shock once i arrived here i was like oh my god and some of these things i'm going to share with you guys like right now so let's get into it the first thing that shocked me was the weather i lived in mombasa and uh, in mombasa it is always like warm if it's cold if we have winter in mombasa rainy season then it's about 24 26 degrees then it's cold but here in the Netherlands, I arrived in March and it was still really cold weather. I think it was minus one. I had never seen minus one, minus one. I didn't even know that there was something that existed like minus one. When my husband was driving me from the airport to go home, uh, we stopped someplace and then he asked, he asked me to get out and uh, just feel the air, just feel how cold it was. and. Oh my God, I couldn't imagine. Even when we got home, I asked him, how do people even go outside? How do people even like go buy food? How do people even survive? Like for the first time to experience such cold weather was, it was just a shock for me. Coming from Kenya, that was just a shock. And number two, the roads, the cleanliness of the roads, how, every exit and every everything is just whichever direction you want to take everything is just indicated there are so many boards on the roads telling you how many kilometers you're supposed to drive here you're supposed to drive there and also there were no potholes on the roads i am kenyan i come from kenya potholes is part of our lives you go to the left you hit a pothole you go to the right you hit a pothole you go back, you hit a pothole, you have potholes. We have potholes in all, yeah, almost everywhere in Kenya. Let's just say that also on the highway. So driving from the airport to go home on a road that has no single pothole was just, was just weird. Like I was like, and also they indicate here you need to exit and you need to join this road. And even roads here have names like you hear a uh, Ain, I don't know what. I was like, oh my God, this is exactly the opposite of where I'm coming from. <laughs> yeah, but it is. it was just refreshing. And the cleanliness of the roads, let me just talk about it. I didn't see even a single piece of paper or plastic bag i didn't see that all the way from the airport to our house there was that was really strange really but i then you you but later on actually you get used to it and now even when i go to kenya i don't dare throw anything on the ground any dirt on the ground i bring my rubbish with me my dirt with me my my things that i want to throw away i bring them with me until i find a bin or i just bring it all the way home and throw it where it's supposed to be so you also learn how to become responsible so that's a good that's a good thing something else that shocked me is how many people bike here in the netherlands oh the amount of bikes here in the netherlands and the fact that cars stop to give way to the bikes that was <laughs> that was a big shock because in kenya when you're biking let's say in kenya if you have a bike and you're biking on the road what you will hear is t t t t people will start hooting people will call you names they will say 
Eh, peleka ujinga mbali, you know, bring your stupidity far away from here. Don't go biking on the road. It is not normal to go biking like on the road. But the thing about the Netherlands is that they have like special roads for bikers. So every place in the Netherlands, every area in the Netherlands has um special roads for bikers so and also on a roundabout actually the biker has right of way in most cases so the cars and the bikers communicate they the cars they already know who has right of way so there is no like collusion there is no name callings there is nothing like that yeah unless a mistake happens then you will uh, you will hear things like oh, for doma, blah, 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 blah. then you will you will hear them cursing but it's really really it's really amazing how that was a shock especially for somebody like me i didn't know how to bike when i was in kenya i didn't get opportunity to own a bike bikes were very expensive for for me for us for my family so i didn't learn how to bike when i was young so when i moved to the netherlands i didn't know how to bike and the first thing uh, the first week when we arrived my husband and i uh, my husband bought me a bike and he told me that i needed now to learn because now i am in the netherlands everybody bikes here and it was such a challenge but he was like running you can i can still picture it I can still picture that it was very funny he would like hold on to the bike at the back and I would go sit on the bike and start trying to bike and he would like hold on to it and run with me up and down up and down until when I was able to like you know balance on the bike myself so that was really sweet of him so yes now I know how to bike and now I own a bike which is a cool thing it's a good thing I think no like for real so yeah you also learn new things when you move to to this country something else that really shocked me was like um public transport and public transport shocked me because okay in kenya we have public transport also but we have lots and lots of matatus matatus are the small buses we have lots of them so when one goes you will find another one immediately in fact there are so many matatus and so many matatu conductors trying to get you into their bus or into their matatu so you hear like mtuapa, mtuapa, bamburi, mwisho, bamburi, mtamboni. everywhere they are shouting and they are asking you to get into the bus here in the netherlands is like the bus comes to a certain place so a certain bus station at a certain time and if you're not there the bus will leave also like a specific bus comes at a specific time so let's say 8 30 and another bus comes later at 8 45 and another bus comes like 15 minutes later or maybe 30 minutes later so that for me was really a shock being used to buses everywhere in kenya for 24 hours you will not miss a bus that will take you to your home but here also the time of the buses are really like uh, up to 11 after 11 there is no more bus if you want to go from the city to your house then you need to arrange for a taxi so that is also something that was very strange for me that was that was a shock really that was it was something that i uh, took a while for me to get used to especially with time management i mean i come from kenya african timer time management for who i come when i come and i go when i go <laughs> another thing that surprised me was like making appointments for something if you want to go see a doctor in the netherlands if you want to go to the uh, gemeente our social house uh what is remained i will attach i will translate that later so if you have if you want to go to any building any office whatever you need to make an appointment and you do that by calling them or you do that by uh sending an email so the first thing also that when you arrive here in the netherlands you need to go and register yourself at the townhouse that is at the gemeente and 
we needed like to make an appointment so my husband was calling and he was making a, an appointment and they told him like we needed to go like two days later at a specific time i think it was 11 40 or something so on that day we needed to get to like leave the house earlier so that we are there 10 minutes before 11 40 11 30 i don't know but we needed to be there like a few minutes before the time of the appointment that for me was very strange you know why because in kenya when you want to go to like whatever office you just go you know you just go you wait until it's your turn if you want to go to the hospital in kenya you just wake up in the morning you go to the hospital and you wait there until you get served well i don't know about private hospitals but i'm talking about public hospital so don't don't jump on me depending on how many people there that are waiting in front of you because everybody wants to wake up early to go to the hospital so that they get served early so it depends so you don't the point is you don't really make appointments in kenya to visit any office but here in the netherlands oh my god that was really like you need to call the hospital if you, or if even if you have a, a headache, you need to call and make an appointment and see when it is that they have time to see you so that you can go and complain about your headache or your teeth or your back, you know. That was, in the beginning, that was something that was very hard for me because I did not understand why I needed to make an appointment. And they would even say, okay, they would say, you make, you try to make an appointment today. You want to go today, but it's not possible because the doctor is busy. He's fully booked. Then you have to go on Thursday and you are calling on Monday morning. So that was something that was very strange for me and it was very hard. But now I have accepted it. You just have to accept it. Otherwise, it will remain really a problem for you if you don't accept it. So, yeah, that was something that was that was a big shock. And, yeah, that was a really big one. <laughs> Another thing that shocked me is that you here in the Netherlands, actually, it depends where you live. If you live in Amsterdam or in Rotterdam, in big cities, I think it's different. But if you live in small cities like I used to live in Enschede and um, to go out is mostly to go out partying is mostly Friday and Saturday, Friday and Saturday. And I think also Thursday they have something like students uh, yeah, going out or whatever, but mostly it's Friday and Saturday. So I am coming. I came from Kenya where you can go out from Monday to Monday. Monday there is salsa, Tuesday there is uh, karaoke, karaoke, you can, whichever you say, whatever. Uh, Wednesday you have uh, something. There is always something at the bar. There is always a place to go out in Kenya. Monday to Monday, there is always something to do. And you go out on Monday, in Kenya, the club is full. You go on Tuesday, it's full. So I wanted to go out here on a Wednesday, I remember, when I just arrived, the week after. I wanted to go out on a Wednesday. My husband told me, no, here you don't just go out on every single day. You just don't do that. If you want to go out, then it's Friday and Saturday. I didn't believe him, so we went to the city. Do you know that the city was empty? At 7, 8 o'clock, the city was empty. I came from, I used to live in Tuapa. In Tuapa, from 5 o'clock in the evening, it becomes very, very active. Everybody is outside. The shops start working and market people start selling their stuff. The clubs open up everything becomes very active like monday to monday <laughs> so for me it was a very big very big shock to go to the city and find nobody nobody was walking in the city and in fact it was also raining and it was cold 
oh my god that was that was a very rude shock i didn't like that shock <laughs> i didn't that shock really bothered me yeah but then later on you also learn and then you you realize yeah it's not always about going out and uh actually you can also have fun in your house and not go out i mean i'm saying that trying to justify the situation i mean that was a shock that was a big rude shock i see that the video is going too far so i will stop with this now but this is going to continue because there are so many things that shock me that i want to share with you guys there are so many but this is part one so part two and maybe part three will come later but before i go i want to say thank you again for everybody that has subscribed to my youtube channel thank you very much for your support and if you've liked this video also uh press that like button put a thumbs up i will really appreciate that as well and also what you could do is share this video with your friends with your family you know tell them about me ask them to subscribe and ask them also to support me um i will really 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 appreciate that as well and i will see you guys in the next video please stay tuned subscribe put that notification bell on so that whenever i post a video you will be immediately alerted Thank you guys again and I will see you in the next video. Peace out. Bye-bye.